Hi, and in this video, I'm gonna share one thing that you absolutely must do to finally get the type of relationship you want with men. I have so many clients, students, who talk to me about being frustrated <laughs> with the type of relationships that they're getting into with guys. This guy isn't treating me the way that I want. This guy isn't meeting my needs physically, emotionally, spiritually, all this frustration. It doesn't have to be that way, ladies, I promise you. So I'm gonna share with you the most important thing you can do to finally have the relationship you want and how to do it but before I do that, take a second, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet, and click that link in the comments and caption because I have some amazing free training, an amazing free gift that is going to give you an incredible boost in your connections and relationships with men. All right, now let's dive into this. The one thing that you absolutely must do to have the relationship that you want with the masculine is set boundaries. Not the sexiest answer, right? It's not the sexiest answer, but I can tell you, it is everything. And women have so much fear around boundaries, right? That boundaries are going to be masculine, that boundaries are disciplinarian, that boundaries are going to push guys away. Am I right or am I right? Well, I want to destigmatize boundaries for you because guess what? This is a little secret. Men want boundaries. <laughs> Men need boundaries, right? To men, boundaries are a roadmap to your happiness. We are not mind readers. If you do not lovingly express to us what you need, you cannot expect us to give you what you need. Do you feel me there? So the greatest way that you can share with a man what it is that you need, what your desires are, what you want in relationship, how you want to be touched, how you want to be spoken to, all of it boils down to boundaries, right? So look at them as a roadmap to happiness that you're giving us and recognize that we will welcome them as long as they're delivered in the right way. Okay, so first off, there's a specific type of boundary that you always want to start off with giving, right? It's not the, no, don't do that. No, don't touch me that way. Stop doing that. It's not a negative prohibitive boundary. It's a positive constructive boundary. It's an invitation. Anytime a man is doing something that you don't want him to be doing, right? Or, or there's something, he's kissing you, you know, with uh, too much tongue. Instead of telling him, hey, you're kissing me with way too much tongue. I feel like I'm being attacked by a giant lizard. <laughs> Instead of telling him that, right? And like making him feel, oh my gosh, like I've done something wrong. Which if you do that, if you, if you, if you automatically default to like sort of negative, boundaries like that, you're going to activate a man's mama trauma. You're going to make him feel like he did something wrong, like he was when he, when he was a little boy, and then he's going to shut down from you, and it's not going to land the way that you want, all right? But a positive, constructive boundary would be like, hey, why don't we, you know, slow down a little bit, and I can just feel your lips a little bit more. Something like that, right? You want to always invite a man into a course of action that's more in alignment with what it is that you want rather than telling him to stop doing the things that you don't want him to do as often as possible. So first off, make your boundary a positive, constructive boundary. And secondly, when you're asking a man to give you something or to do something that's uh, in alignment with what you want, when you're, when you're expressing a boundary to him, I want you to ask yourself, what's the energy that I'm expressing that boundary from? Is it uh, fear and anxiety or is it a grounded, empowered energy, right? So a lot of women, and I had this come up with a client just, just this week. Uh, she was talking to me about how she expressed a boundary to a guy that she was enjoying getting to know and then he didn't text her for like a day or something. And she's, a, she's a, a woman that likes to have a lot of, you know, continual contact with people that she's talking to and getting to know. She has a little anxious attachment style, which is totally normal and totally fine. So many, so many uh, clients and students have that as well as, you know, something that I worked through in my own life, right? So she, ex she got triggered by the fact that he hadn't texted her all day. And she just, from a space of anxiety and from a space of sort of anxiousness, she said, hey, you know, it's important to me that you text me, uh, that I hear from you during the day, you know? And he could pick up 
energetically, just through the text messages, that the energy that she was uh, coming from was very kind of fearful and anxious. And because of that, he was like, oh, okay, well, then maybe we're not a good fit. He immediately backed off and it sort of ended the connection. This was after like a first date, so it was pretty early, right? And especially in the early stages of getting to know somebody, uh, it's a very fragile circumstance for the most part, right? So uh, then, she, then, but then, okay, with this, uh, she went out with another guy this next week and she expressed the same thing basically after a first date. Hey, I like to, you know, I like to connect and I like to have dialogue with someone during the day because the same thing happened again, right? He didn't reach out to her after a first date for a little while because he was busy with his kid and he had a lot of stuff going on. And she responded from a grounded place, not from a triggered and anxious place, but from a grounded, empowered place, said, hey, you know, uh, it's important to me to be in when I'm in relationship or when I'm connecting with somebody to hear from them on a regular basis and to, to feel like I, we have a dialogue going during the week and that we're not just talking when we're on a date. I like to feel connected to you when we're not on the date. And he was and he was like, oh my gosh, I totally understand that. And I am gonna be, you know, I'm busy with my kid and my work and everything. And also I'm gonna make an effort to, you know, connect with you more often. So because the energy she came from was grounded and it was loving and it, it came from like a different space, the guy responded to it from a different way, right? Because fundamentally, this is a deep truth here, it is very high value of you to own your needs and your wants to men from the beginning. So when do we set boundaries? When do we express our preferences? That's another way to even talk about boundaries, right? To talk to them as preferences. When do we express our preferences to, to men or to anybody? Right up front, talk about what it is that you want. Talk about what it is that makes you happy. Talk about the way you like to be touched and like to be kissed if things are going in that direction. You know, and if a man is doing something about uh, doing something that you like and he's operating in alignment, knowingly or unknowingly, with a boundary that you have, right? Like say he's, you know, paying for dinner and that you, you, you enjoy that because that demonstrates that he's proactive and that he wants to be a provider or he's holding the door for you and that makes you feel safe, you know, and you really appreciate that chivalrous action. Acknowledge him for it. One of the greatest ways to reinforce a man's uh, positive behavior is acknowledgement, verbal acknowledgement. Let him know he's doing it right. I want you to think of a man as a caveman, right? Men are cavemen. We are not mind readers. We don't know if what we're doing is making you happy or not. Even if you're giving us nonverbal cues that you're sure we're picking up on, do not assume that a man ever knows what's going on in your head or in your heart. If you uh, feel that he's doing something wonderful, let him know. Because think of him like a caveman. He's a caveman going, me do good, me do good. We're just cavemen. We don't know, we really don't. So by you stating your boundaries, stating your preferences, doing it in a loving, inviting, positive way, you're setting the stage for a man to have a clear blueprint, like a clear, a clear roadmap to give you the sort of love and affection and connection that you want. And if he is a guy who's truly, you know, investing in you, who's truly interested in you, he's going to be more than willing to accommodate your requests and your boundaries, and he's gonna see you as higher value for expressing them to him, okay? So I hope this has destigmatized boundaries for you, and you'll start going out there and lovingly expressing them to men that you're looking to get to know, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, take a second, hit that little subscribe button. Don't forget to click that link in the comments and caption. I've got some awesome training that's gonna make a huge difference in your connections and relationships with men. And be sure to click this next video. I've created a powerful, powerful video that shows you 10 signs that a man is emotionally investing in you. These are foolproof signs that will let you know that a guy is either into you and he's emotionally investing and he's gonna be listening to your boundaries or not. So click that video and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Number one is they embrace your flaws with open arms and a smile. And this reminds me of a really great quote that we come to love not by finding a perfect person, but by learning to see an imperfect person perfectly.